We go through these really intense moments in the mountains. I got the shaky legs. You have so much adrenaline, and then you have like a low after you crash. And then you get back up. And there's all these emotions throughout the day, but we're together out there. Those experiences to me are where I find all of my deepest relationships have come from. V and I have slowly gravitated towards each other because we genuinely love to ski. We want to be our best selves and we also want to uplift all the women around us. There's an instant sense of camaraderie when I come across another nurse. It's helpful to have someone that gets what you're going through. I think that this relationship is very reciprocal. The reason I ski with Margo is because I trust her. We have the same risk level and we have the same fun level. Jane and I met, what was the year, Jane? 1981. 1981. I was trekking through Nepal. Here comes Jane Galley. <laughs> and we had so much fun, and we've been friends ever since. Yeah. We worked three days a week in the summer in the Exum office. I learned how to be in the Exum office from Margot. In the winter, when we're not working yeah. for Exum, all we do is ski. <laughs> <laughs> wow, Marg, what do you think has been the big progression. First of all, more women. Yeah. Way so more women. Many more women skiing now. Yeah. And great new equipment and great, you know, women that are interested and want to train to do this kind of stuff. Yes. That are strong and healthy. They're getting into climbing and now this incredible freestyle skiing and acrobatics and at our time, it, there weren't really many women out there. It really was guys we went with. So women, you know, many training. more, much stronger, um, willing to go for it more. Yeah, no, it's, it's a big change. So there's like sledding trailheads, sledding trailhead. I really get better at snowmobiling. <laughs> I think because we came from the different backgrounds, like a perfect partnership. I feel that. Your strengths are skiing fast and steep. My strengths are in the air. And it's fun to have another woman that's like, go for it. Right, It's right. just like that confidence that we're kind of in it together. Were you like, I'm gonna move to Jackson and become a professional skier, or did you just want to change pace? I had come off getting 17th place in moguls every single time. Did my first big mountain competition. I got fifth place. Top five, baby. Turns out it was like a low level comp, <laughs> but. Kind of that transition point where you're like scared and unsure, but you know that there's something. Yeah, yeah. You don't want to give up yet. We thought we were gonna take the heli up and just have the best day of our lives. That's actually what I had in my brain Me when too. we woke up. T-tap, T-tap, T-tap. Nar, nar, six, six. I thought we were gonna oh. crush. Woo! This is wild. And then it was sun crust, and then it was sticky, wet snow. There's a crush! We'll make it work pillows that had really, really fast snow to just the flattest landings I've experienced this season. Ow. Oh, you should tell them about the, the fog. We skied a cool war. Gorgeous. And we're out here for the beauty of it. That was heinous. I like having a prop. I do. Yeah, it makes me feel more comfortable. It's like holding a glass of wine or something. <laughs> then we had to bushwhack a bit back to the car. We've been walking through the woods for hours. <laughs> you look really 
good. Dude. Thank you. The whole crew just took an absolute smackdown. Got back up today. Pretty high, high expectations of just cruising in the sun, having a girl's day, and of course, we get valley fog and virgin layer that's creeping up on us fast, but you know what? We have peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Cheers. And we've got side hits all day long, baby. Side hits, baby. <laughs> a lot of these shoots, the reality is that not every day is going to be epic, but you just get up every morning with a little bit of hope. And when you actually hit it too, it's kind of like gambling. You get one good powder day, you're able to like scratch for another three weeks. Oh, you got a lot. Lady luck on <laughs> our side. <laughs> and you got to play the game, you know, to get the powder days. It, Put in the time. And eventually you're going to get a good day. That's totally. how the odds work out. But even when you're having a bad day, you're still out on the hill skiing. <gasps> we won, baby! What did we win? Two dollars! It's snowing! It's happening! <laughs> This looks sweet. It seems like around every corner there's like another little secret spot. I took the cookie from the cookie jar. It was me. I ripped out all the feathers from the sofa too. Yes, I did. What's your plan? What do you plan to do? You're gonna tell them we're gonna. To do. Looks good to me. That's really cool. Yeah, the one with the tree. What's your plan? When you're in like that flow, if that's something I think I'll chase for yeah. as long as I'm able. It's like every day finding a little goal to make your skiing better. Yeah, and coming away from a day where you like really show yourself what you're capable of. I can ride that high for a really long time. And oh I, yeah. I think those are the days that make all the gray days worth it. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a lot of gray. There's some gray out yeah. there. There's some gray. <laughs> Well, my parents, my dad grew up skiing, and he was obsessed with the mountains. And then my mother learned it as a, when she met him, was in her 20s. And they just loved being in the mountains and loved skiing so well. My father was a doctor, my mother was a homemaker, nurse, then homemaker. My, my mother was the only, she was out there. That's why I, that's why I can't cook, Margo, because my mother hated cooking. Oh, my, she, my mother wanted to be skiing, not cooking. So I went, right, that's it. That's why I'm never going to cook. I'm just going to ski too. <laughs> no, I have to ski and cook. I got to do it all. Not me. Yeah. I might not have realized at the time how big of an influence my mom was on me for skiing, but just like seeing her persistence where she made sure that we had all the tools we needed to get to the hill and made sure that we lived across the street and worked all the time so that we could actually afford to ski. I think it really taught me the value of supporting your family. And, mm -hmm. and it seems like more broadly, like supporting other people. Yeah, Sasha. Ha 
couple good turns and then it got heavier. Mm -hmm. yeah, and then nice. survival skiing to the bottom. <laughs> Our moms escaped during the Vietnam War in 1975, right before the fall of Saigon. And they came to the US. My mom was 16, your mom was 18. Yeah. They, they landed at Camp Pendleton, that refugee camp. So mom's first time skiing was at Big Bear, not too far from LA. Her second time skiing was with my dad. It was at, like early days, oh, okay. I yeah. think my mom's first skiing experience, I think. Your mom invited her mm -hmm. to go ski in Jackson Hole on like a vacation. And my mom ended up meeting my dad on a chairlift at Big Bear. Now skiing is like the center of their lives and they passed it on to us. I think skiing really felt like a place where we were really in touch with who we actually are. She would like send me stuff on yeah. and be like, oh, look at what Sasha's doing. You're one of my biggest inspirations for skiing. I remember when like you became my hero in the outdoor industry. I don't know if it was a photographer post. You were like doing a sideways split <laughs> on this vertical wall. And I was just like, holy shit. Like, look at the athlete that my cousins turned into. I'm sure our moms are appreciative that we like finally have the relationship now that they wanted us to have all along. I asked mom how she believed that she could be a skier because she was the first yeah. when I grew up in a tropical country. But she like goes off on this tangent. I understand now how it's related, but she starts talking about chemistry class in seventh grade and how the teacher was like explaining the difference between anodes and cathodes and like positive and negative. And so that they could remember, he was like, okay, negative you know, that is associated with the female, like weaker. And she stood up in class and she was like, I disagree with you. And he was like, well, why don't you try and become a chemist someday then? Like basically like you, there's no way you could ever do this. And so she became a chemical engineer. Yeah. And that's her story <laughs> of like skiing, which I, what I take away from that is even if no one else is doing this, no one else looks like you and you want it and you love it, like go and do it. I started skiing when I was two, mountain biking, and following dad to yoga class when I was eight. By the time I was in high school, I was competing as both a ski racer and a mountain bike racer. I competed on the Free Skiing World Tour for three or four years. After competing on the Free Ride World Tour, I went through two years of health issues and chronic pain, multiple times of burnout. That was when I really grabbed for my yoga and meditation practice. I'm a meditation teacher, I'm a skier, and I am the founder and director of Mountain Mind Project, which provides meditation training for resilience and performance. An athlete really is this like identity of strength and failure. It's 
people who are constantly kind of pushing themselves against challenges and challenges are where we grow. It reminds me what I'm capable of and I saw that in mom too. I started skiing when I was about three years old. We lived in LA and my parents realized that we needed to be closer to skiing so they moved us to Lake Tahoe. So I did moguls and acro skiing, which is also called ballet skiing. When I moved to Washington, I couldn't afford to go skiing, so I didn't have a season's pass. It was so hard to get into backcountry skiing with support as a woman of color, like how many steps it was, how expensive it was. All of the stuff that I've done through She Jumps as a nonprofit has been focused on how can I get women to have better access to outdoor sports, specifically BIPOC women, and then second off, access to excel at them. I'm also a coffee quality specialist at Starbucks at the headquarters in Seattle, and a skier and an athlete for rock climbing and mountain biking. <laughs> I need so much more sleep than you do. <laughs> yeah. Sacrifice sleep and showering to do all these things. <laughs> us focusing on mind strengthening and body strengthening and having a good solid basis of knowledge. It's something that I've really wanted to share with other people. We all have the capacity within us. It's just circumstantial. Our moms demonstrate this. Fostering those conditions to support that potential that's already in every person is what I'm really invested in. Yeah, me too. So I lost my husband when my son was three and we were living in Canada. So I had to pull that scene together, sell the cattle ranch. I came back here where my support group was and I had to work. I had other jobs to bring in money. And I had a kid that was, I was a single parent. So I had to take care of Marcus and all that, you know, you, you do it all, man. You pay the bills, you take care of your house, you take care of the kid, you go to work. And then you still have time to go back into skiing. You know, you just have to take the good with the bad. And that's, what, that's how life is. Follow your heart. And be passionate. Practical, but passionate. Do what you love. Just do, do what it. makes you happy. If you're happy and you follow your passion, you can help others too. You're a better person right. in the world because yeah. you're more realized. You can help someone else. If you're not happy and you're crabby, you're no use to anyone else, like, right? What did they call <laughs> Debbie Downer? You don't want to be a Debbie, Debbie Downer. <laughs> <laughs> Hospital life sometimes kind of prepares you for more real life. With every shift, you don't know what you're going to encounter. I've been a nurse for almost a decade now. We do see a lot of death. And sometimes I think it's that, that we can like watch someone die and then continue on with our day. In my department, you kind of have to be able to keep moving. The first year of nursing was like one of the hardest years of my life. I didn't really have anything that brought joy to my life. 
And when I started skiing, I was having so much fun going down green groomers, and then all of a sudden it escalated into something else. Did you start skiing when you were working in Denver? I just wanted to like go drink beers on the deck. I think by that April, I was like, I gotta move to the mountains. Being prepared for anything, you know, three, three nights a week, ups or downs, it does kind of mentally prepare you for what you could encounter like in the mountains. Ooh, I'm cold. <laughs> Your nose is white. Oh my God. What do you guys think? I feel like when I've had to like think through if it's the right decision to keep going, that's usually a sign that it's not. Totally agree. We're gonna spin. It's like knife hard melt freeze crust that's sort of breakable and I, it's definitely not softening. We know that for a fact. So I think we're gonna call it. I get a lot of questions, like questions on how you keep it balanced. Like, right. how do you keep it balanced? If you skied 100K over the month of February, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, I feel like even if it's as silly as like skiing a fresh groomer down at 4 p.m., like I'm in such a better mood mm -hmm. and I take way better care of my patients. I don't know, how do you like find balance? Well, I definitely didn't ski 100K. <laughs> <laughs> That's a big deal. We all need to do something outside of work to make us happy and skiing has always been that for me. The mountains give and take. I think the work I do doesn't help prepare me more. Like you're not used to it. Yeah. I think all of us have experienced loss, but we've probably also had our best days in the mountains. Mm -hmm. It puts it into a different perspective. Hospital life, you get to see the full human experience. You get to see people best days, worst days, um, and just be there for it all. So I think that's a really beautiful thing mm -hmm. about our job. Mm -hmm. Getting to witness that is actually something really special. This is like at least a couple inches. talking to another nurse, they really understand what it feels like to make a mistake or to really see someone pull through. Like I think there's just a different sense of understanding. Or if you need some beta on which kind of dance goes to die, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which kind of scrubs are in these days. <laughs> we heard joggers are in. <laughs> lovely to have a job where you can go in every day, talk to people, help them make a difference in someone's life, even if it's a small difference. It's fulfilling.
Okay, stop. Yeah, stop. Come on, throw. Don't hit the... Put that back. Don't hit the tripod. <laughs> We support our guides like crazy, male yeah. and female. They just happens yeah. to be more men. And they know that we will always help them. That's the most important part of our job. And we praise them. Yeah. When they do a good job, man, I let them know. Yeah. Morgan, nice work, nice work up there, Morgan. So we're not mentoring, we're supporting. You know, Lisa Van Skyver, who is the avalanche technician for Grand Teton, she says I'm her mentor, but I don't consider that. I, I think she's like someone that is a, she takes me with her you know and I I really gain a lot from her because she's this powerful lady I, mountain guide and she, skier and avalanche forecaster mm -mm. and ski patrolman but I just am, feel so lucky to be with her why? so we're both learning from each other yeah but why does this mm -hmm. gnarly 40 year old woman pick you, a 68-year-old woman, to go back to skiing with because she learns from you and well, she we, really likes well, you. Well, we also talk about stuff. Yeah. But Margo does inspire. But Margo's my, my, Margo inspires me. But it works two ways. Yeah, yeah. I've been skiing, I think it's been six seasons now. I've kind of always wanted to be here, but I didn't know what that path was to be able to step onto a big line. I don't always get a shot. That shot right there, so terrible. I've been skiing for 34 years. There's a lot of change happening around me, which is all for the better. And there's more opportunity to be in the mountains with women. It's helped me gain confidence in this space. First run together. Kind of a wild place to do that. <laughs> yeah. Yep. I was rolling through Tahoe on a bike trip and she just hit me up and she was like, do you want to go ride? And I was like, yes, I want to go ride with Michelle Parker. It was natural. We just kept riding together. Brooklyn has been an awesome person to encourage me on my bike. I think she's probably pushed my level of riding more than anyone, to be totally honest. And it was like pretty mind blowing to be out there with you and watch you drop in with the same confidence as you do on your bike. Do you want the ribs? Sure, I'll take the rib. Ribs. And you got the ridge. Yeah. Rib, ridge. Rib, ridge. Let's go, Brooklyn! for me has been like a lot of self-motivated skiing. I just wanted the exposure of scoping out lines, doing that over and over again. It's clear that you've started to establish your confidence in these mountains. It's just so crazy watching you ski, Michelle. I don't think I've ever seen anybody ski like that in real life. Originally laid the groundwork for me. There's so many nuggets of information and help people progress and help people understand, you know? That makes me so happy. Nice run there.
Alaska is this place where everything's magnified. There's blind rollovers, slough. You have to like sharp tune your skills and be super present and focused. And we had all time conditions. Three, two, one. Woo! I think in the last two seasons, I've progressed the most and unlocking these new tools have been amazing. But then also some of the lows have been just some of the gatekeeping and I love the skiing, but I still don't understand where I fit into the culture. I don't know if I'll ever get like burnt out on skiing, but there are moments where I'm like, oh, I could get burnt out on like the culture. And mm -hmm. like, I don't know how to change that to make it easier for other people to like come into the space and being more inclusive has meant the process of how things are done has had to change not just like the end result or the marketing has to change like the process has to be different as well yeah i think you're leading the charge <laughs> but i think it's, it's awesome it's <laughs> yeah so awesome. no kidding yeah. but i think everyone has a responsibility there yeah to change the way we think and to learn as much as we can and to hopefully open up more space and create more space for others to be included. I think like that's all of our responsibility. It should not be shouldered upon you, even though you're here in this space and you're leading the charge. It's so cool to watch you rise up and it's a privilege to be your friend. Thanks all. I've been in this industry for like so long and things have always been in this way. You're just an open thinker and you're like, well, this is how I'm gonna do it. I don't think I had the confidence when I was younger to do that as much. I'm trying to think your best entrance might be just above that cornice, like there. Then you're pushing all your stuff to the right because mm -hmm. you're exiting to the left. Yeah, fluid, but if you're just skiing it ever so slightly right to left, you're like, golden yeah I think I can do this I think you can too <laughs> I felt like I had something to prove all the time and there was only space for one girl on a trip because time after time I was told one's enough we don't need any more than one girl so like that was in my head and that does stuff to you you know if you hear that enough all right don't drop the pad excuse me I don't know how to Confidence. Your exit's clean and the snow is really good. <laughs> that was so much fun. Holy shit. Three, two, one, drop it.
all good? Yeah, I'm fine. Oh man, <sighs> wait to give it your all. Okay. <laughs> yeah, when you're on top of something like that, it's gonna move on either side. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> And every run you learn and you get better and you start to understand it more. Totally. Are all of your pockets open? Brookie! <laughs> this is exactly how it is when we bike. <laughs> Do we have time for one more? Well, let's take you both up there and give Brooklyn a round to you. Do you want to go again? Uh, yeah, I do. Yeah, let's do it again. Yeah, that's perfect. We're yeah. both super fired up to come up again. Three. Two, one. Let's go, Brooklyn! Woo! Fluff was moving. Good Woo. job. That was sweet. Yeah. I want more. <laughs> <laughs>it's so amazing to get an opportunity to progress as a skier to have an opportunity to get onto something and even mess up and be able to try again like that just kind of feels like a privilege to me out here watching you just do that i'm like my mind is blown thank you yeah yeah <laughs> it's so cool when we get together and we get to experience this stuff and it broadens my perspective of our industry and how it works and what we can do to change that and create more space. Honestly, I think that me experiencing joy here is a biggest form of resistance. It's kind of like a big old F you, quite frankly. <laughs> Just like resistance against the same old, same old, you know? Yeah, I'm here for that. Yeah, I support that. watching you drop into that line on Shelly's wall and like completely grease it. I have an immense amount of respect for you being able to say yes, being able to show up and like help open the door. It's huge for me. I'm in love with a man who I never knew existed. Speaking of him, hey baby, hey baby, hey baby. It's been such an honor and a pleasure watching your journey and everything you've been through to be here, and I really appreciate that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing.
You guys look great. You guys look awesome. It's so funny doing this when you're not used to it. <laughs> Can't do too many super close-ups. Oh my God, I hope I have none of, none of those long old lady hairs sticking out of my chin or anything. <laughs> Did you put your boots in ski mode, Mark? I think that did. I think that did. You can double check for me. We complain a little bit about getting old, but we should really celebrate yeah. that we have made it to oh, this age yeah. and still can do I'm what we can do. I'm just so grateful for yeah. every day. The baseline is skiing's for fun, but it's where you do it. Yeah. Sometimes you go, wow, this is really a dumb thing we're doing. <laughs> Just walking uphill and going downhill. But it's what it does to your self-concept and your spirit while you're doing it. If you got a problem, you can ask, what do you think about How this How many that? problems are solved on the ski trail? How many things get Walking taught? up. <laughs> you know, but, but sharing with the right people yeah. is the best. Yeah. 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 That's why Margo and I are still friends and doing it. You know? for after all these years. Okay. I do what I want, damn it. Whatever I want to, damn it. I do what I want, damn it. Whenever I want to, damn it. There is nothing better than skiing. Even sex isn't as good as skiing. It's so much fun. <laughs> Would you agree, ladies?